What do you care about? I care about the big problems facing my generation and hers. I care about protecting our planet from climate change and our rivers from single-use plastics. So there's a world worth growing up in. Don't want to end up like him. I care about everyone getting an education because we wouldn't be here today without a scholarship. I care about treating and preventing cancer like the cancer we lost beautiful Laura to. I care about young people's mental health. Because no one should have to face anxiety or depression alone. And I care about families fleeing war and violence. 
So here at the University of Birmingham, we are taking action on these five big challenges. But we need you. You can help our trees to help us all breathe easier. You can help take action on cancer to find the right treatment for every patient. You can help find treatments for anxiety and depression. You can help communities support refugee families. And you can support essential scholarships and share your expertise as a mentor. So young people like me can go to university. And me. And, and me. me. And me. So tell us which matters the most to you. It's time to take action for our generation and the next. I attended the IEP Summer School in 2017 now and it was the best week ever. I remember Ansar telling us at the beginning of the week that it was going to be the best five days and it really was. I met some people on that summer school that I ended up being best friends with for until now to this day. The ambassadors that have come on to be at university with me, we're really, really close. I had a mentor at the AEP Summer School and me and her now are still really close as well. But overall, it's just made me a much well-rounded person and just looking back on those days now on graduation day, I can't believe how long ago it was. Hi guys, my name is Neve Wilson and I'm on AEP this week. I'm on the humanities stream wanting to study psychology at Birmingham. Um, so I'm going to be doing vlogs throughout the week, so hope you enjoy it. We can do it and we're on this programme for that particular reason and if it wasn't for many of the people in this room we wouldn't have given that opportunity and so I'd like to thank every single one of you for giving all of us young people the chance to reach our potential and even further if we want to, if one of us are working, we can do it. On A-Level Results Day, I was ecstatic. I remember going to sixth form instead of looking on UCAS in the morning, so I didn't want to know if I got in or not. I wanted to get my results first. I remember opening the envelope with my dad, who's here on campus with me today, and it was just like that thank you moment of just all the hard work and all the all-nighters and everything paying off finally. So that was an amazing day. It's A-Level Results Day and I've just collected my results. I got the grades that I needed to get into Birmingham, so I'm so excited to be starting my psychology degree in October. I just thought I'd take this opportunity to thank all the sponsors that supported the summer school that I attended last year, as it was such an amazing experience and I met some lifelong friends there. And I just want to thank you all for your support in enabling students like me to be able to attend Birmingham. The bursary actually enabled me to be able to uh, travel from here back to Bromsgrove and from Bromsgrove to here as often as I needed to in first year, uh, which was kind of essential because it was around the time at the same time that my mum was ill with the stroke. And so I was also like needed quite a lot at home. It enabled me to be able to take her shopping and take her out and do all the things that maybe my dad was struggling to do, trying to run a business and a household and stuff. So that bursary enabled me to just be there when I was needed to, whenever it was whenever what time it was it didn't matter so that was really amazing it was my uh first week in a sixth form my brand new sixth form that i just started and my mum unfortunately suffered a stroke and you kind of learn from quite a young age that the world doesn't stop just because something bad happens you know it carries on and that's where you know the a to b program kind of levels the playing field it's just bringing us back up to where we would have been if life would have given us the same opportunities as everybody else being able to have um, the freedom that the scholarship gave me when I started uni, I was able to move into halls and I was very aware that 
I was going to struggle because I knew that my mum needed my support in that time. But I also really wanted to have the experience to get into uni and get in, in halls and meeting new people. And so having that scholarship gave me the ability to get like a, an annual train pass to back and forth to Bromsgrove. So it really gave me that opportunity to just be there when I needed to. So I've been a part of the mentor scheme this past year at uni and uh, my mentor Paul, unfortunately we haven't been able to meet up in person due to Covid but we've been able to have Zoom sessions every other Friday and it's given me that structure that I've really needed this year due to having online lectures it's kind of been that one thing in my diary that's stays the same. It's been life coaching, it's been career talks, it's been giving me self-confidence when I've been feeling a little bit down in the dumps. It's just been that thing that's really like pulled it all together and made me crack on over the weekend that coming after it. It's just been perfect. So I couldn't thank him enough. It's been absolutely amazing. I would say a massive thank you to all of the alumni that have supported students like me. Without the scheme, I definitely wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be stood here in my robes graduating. You know, I've made myself really proud and I've put in the hard work, but it's with the support of the alumni that's enabled me to do that. So just a massive thank you, really.
have great pleasure in declaring this congregation open. Chancellor, distinguished guests, members of the university, family members, friends, and especially graduates, a very warm welcome to you on this wonderful occasion, the first set of degree congregations we've been able to hold in this most magnificent and majestic of buildings since 2019. Today, you graduate from the University of Birmingham, a university with a long and proud story. It's a story founded on the vision of Joseph Chamberlain in 1900 to provide a university for the people of the city, a great school of universal instruction taking all knowledge in its province. This is a university that has always sought to teach to test, to extend, and to apply knowledge in the broadest range of disciplines. And that breadth is illustrated throughout this very building. Outside, the friezes beneath the domes depict engineering and metallurgy and music. Behind me, in the spectacular south window, you can see commerce and medicine, the arts, physics, and more. The Great Hall itself that we're sitting in today has a remarkable history and story. When it was opened in 1909 by King Edward VII, it was described as the greatest glory of this, the first original civic red brick university. And that story encompasses not only a hundred years of examinations and graduations and ceremonies and functions, but also the hall's service as a military hospital during the First World War, as an emergency gym in the second, and most recently as a COVID testing facility. The global pandemic has impacted all our lives in ways we could never have imagined only two years ago. Our graduating cohort today, you, you have adapted, persevered, and shown more resilience and ingenuity and tenacity than possibly any graduating cohort this hall has seen before you. And we're proud, proud that you've overcome all of those challenges to achieve your degrees. You're extraordinary people and we're here to celebrate your achievements. You came to the University of Birmingham because you wanted to come to a great place of learning. You wanted to test yourselves. You wanted to equip yourselves for the next phase of your life. And because of COVID, your experience will not have been quite what you were expecting. But you stand here today having overcome all barriers and achieved your goals nonetheless. Graduation day is a day for stories. It's a day for the individual stories of each of you, students of all ages and backgrounds and nationalities who animate this great university. And behind each of the names that we read out today is an individual chapter written into the history of the university. But the ceremony also marks a momentous occasion and significant chapter in your life stories. It's a chapter that's been made possible through the combined and continued support and tireless dedication of all those gathered in the Great Hall today. And we're delighted to welcome parents and guardians, partners, family and friends who've come to celebrate this important moment in your lives. It's right on an occasion such as today that you will recognize their contribution to your success 
and I'm sure you'll want to do that in your own ways. Today marks the end of one kind of relationship with the university and the start of a new one. Today, you become a members of a new family, a distinguished family with over 350,000 members in over 170 countries around the world, the alumni of the University of Birmingham. And you'll join our alumni engaged in an astonishing array of projects and professions and we look forward to witnessing your own achievements and successes being added to the list in years to come. You, and those who are with you, have many reasons to be proud today, and it's our great pleasure to share in that pride as the Chancellor will now admit you to your degrees. Chancellor, to you and the University, I present the names of these graduates as listed in my programme, both in attendance and, and in absentia, prove worthy to be admitted to their respective degrees. By virtue of my authority as Chancellor, I have great pleasure in admitting those persons listed in the programme to the degrees to which they are to be admitted. So, College of Life and Environmental Sciences, School of Geography, Earth and Environmental Sciences, Doctor of Philosophy. For research into local community responses to prison design and aesthetics, Eleanor Slee. For research into the urban heat island and how it relates to city size, Mukhtar Abdul Rashid. For research into children's experiences of happiness in Lima, Peru, Maria Jesus Alfaro Munoz. For research into health-seeking behaviours in all-producing regions of Nigeria, Emma Itam Ima. <laughs> For research into the linkages between air pollution and meteorology with athletic performance, James Robert Hodgson. For research into the evolution and ecology of marine photoplankton, Amy Patricia Jones. <laughs> Master of Science, Air Pollution Management and Control, Jingru Geng. Brittany Perrin Huggins. <laughs> Benjamin Peter Bruno Reeves. <laughs> Yiju Su. Ruji Tang.
Cheng Zhu Tong. Applied Meteorology and Climatology, Joel Arnold. Olivia Taylor Birch. Andy Challoner. Kay Downey. Shona Jane Ferguson. Christopher Nicholas Finch. Alice Jade Fowl. Rosanna Harris. <laughs> Harry Frederick Jarrett. <laughs> Amy Lees. Eleanor Carol Rose Ravenscroft. <laughs> Lauren Emily Rowley. <laughs> Holly Elizabeth Gillian Willis. Environmental Health, Jennifer Bainbridge. <laughs> Sophie Borg. <laughs> Joseph Botton. Jamie Robert Davis. <laughs> Eleanor D Dunstan. <laughs> Lawrence Finn. Jordan Francis. <laughs> Anastasis Yanis Alcanda Knight. <laughs> Angela Mahetney. Mariam Hansa Nazam. <laughs> Chani Roshni Golpal Krishna Patel. <laughs> Health, Safety and Environmental Management, Budu Mohammed Adi Al Hini. Nawaf Osim M. Alfenayan. <laughs> Sikal Okoli Balina Du. <laughs> Ali
Gorib Hassan Hassan. Sorry. Dorothy Mutsvani Moto. Frank Jr. Adoy Akufu. Akufu. Anthony Obogo Okito. Aditya Sharma. Hydrogeology, Campbell Air. Matthew Clues. Samuel Dickens. Amelia Margaret Ebanks. David Alexander Hughes. Alex Peter Mulcahy. Sonia Singh. Zachary Smith. Miles David Still. Katie Sarah Turner. Nathan Wong. Patrick Wright. Research in Human Geography, Kate Lucy Doherty. River Environments and Air Management, Martin Buttle. Jin Yu Kao. Alex Dodd. Michael Finney. <laughs> Lee Peter Haverson. <laughs> Matthew Hudson. <laughs> Lauren Hunt. Isabel Josephine Kylie Aitken. <laughs> Eleanor May Kendrick. <laughs> Charlotte Kiernan.
Alexander Linfield. Nicholas James Lugg. Lisa Meek Nanelli. Daniel Pierce. Joseph Ramsden. Daniel Sambrook. James Gary Skitt. Ellie Beth Smith. Chai Su Chai. Urban and Regional Planning. Lanisa Emily Agnew. <laughs> Sullivan Archer. <laughs> Harriet Assel Jarvis. Holly Victoria Beckett. <laughs> Ashley Bidwell. <laughs> Rosie Francesca Bleckensop. Joseph Anthony Luke Bickerstaff Blick. <laughs> Forrest Washington Charles. <laughs> Emily Cox. Usha Nandini Dinagaran. <laughs> Ryan Funnel. <laughs> Katie Gregory. Holly Harrison. <laughs> Wee Jay He. <laughs> Jamel Hornsby Adoy. Henry Holden. <laughs> Sanya Imran. <laughs> Alexander Johnson. Sarah Jones. <laughs> Nathan Lyne.
Nathan Muscle. George Milburn. <laughs> Eleanor Grace McCall. <laughs> Mislav Omazik. Michael Parham. <laughs> Jacob Paul. <laughs> Jordan Quinlan. <laughs> Bethany Alice Robbins. Camille Christoph Rogg. <laughs> Shivakaran Shan Mugav El Messi. <laughs> Rachel Taylor. Maeve Whelan. <laughs> Emily Williams. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts, Geography, Thea Ansbro Turner. Kushia Balogun. <laughs> James Kilgore. <laughs> Anthony Scoffin. James Thompson. <laughs> Geography with a year abroad, Alice Elizabeth Campbell. <laughs> Bachelor of Science, Environmental Science, Jakey Wee. Geography, Jaspreet Kaur Ranu. <laughs> Geology, Lucy Southen. <laughs> Geology and Physical Geography, Rebecca Andrews. Riha Fahera Chowdhury. <laughs> School of Psychology, Bachelor of Sciences, Psychology, Rebecca Kate Lewis. Dominic Smith. <laughs> School of Geography, Earth and Environmental Sciences, Master of Science, Applied Meteorology and Climatology, Bixuan Chen.
I will now introduce the student speaker, Camille Rugg, who will now speak on behalf of the student cohort. First of all, congratulations graduates. Graduation is a fantastic period of transition that allows us to both reflect on the accomplishments of our time at university and to look forward into our next steps into the world. We're all here today because of an incredible effort we've put in and it has been no small task. So I sincerely hope you're all proud of yourselves. I was happy to find out I'd be presenting to a room full of geographers and fellow graduates from the School of Geography because geographers are by far the best specialism because of our awareness of the interconnected issues of the world. We have all have our specialism through technical knowledge in certain topics and fields, but also an appreciation of the need to look beyond our disciplines and see where we can work together with everyone around us. Bridging the gap between people and place, social and environmental issues, we are the ones who connect and create solutions. We have the key skills going into the future. We have the opportunity to address global challenges through our work, and that all comes from the School of Geography. As the next generation, we're at the front of that change. During our time at the University of Birmingham, our studies, hobbies, student life has all brought us together to collaborate and support one another. The traits of compassion and communication are among the skills that we've picked up and that aren't really specifically listed on our graduate certificates but are there with us. Beyond that simple qualification, we need to carry those skills forward and remember to collaborate and work with each other. A lot of us joined here today by our parents, so I want to acknowledge all the work that parents have done in the background supporting everyone through this process. Some of us here are on our own as well. And so I want to sort of congratulate you and push yourselves through this as well. Whether the graduates sitting here next to you tell you this or not, everyone really appreciates the work that you've done, whether you're here alongside friends or your family. I also want to acknowledge the incredible work and enthusiasm for academics, namely uh, the heads of the departments like Kat Salter, Austin Barber, Chris Bradley, John Tellum, Phil Jones, and many more, of many of whom have provided a source of enthusiasm and motivation throughout our studies. Finally, thank you graduates, have a wonderful day. So you started off the ceremony as graduates. You are now graduates. Congratulations to our graduates. I think, uh, as uh, Kareem Rogge just said in his speech, how he thanked people. And I, I thank everyone here for being here, but I thank the graduates for graduating. But you would not have done that without your hard work. Uh, pa Adwa at Alta is our motto, which is all about hard work. And you've done it on your own? No. You've done it on your own along with the support of your friends and the support of your family and the support of your wonderful teachers. So a huge round of applause uh, to all of them. Graduates, please could you stand up and applaud them. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and, and thank you again to Camille Rog, our speaker. I think he deserves a huge round of applause, our student speaker today. So thank you. Thank you to Professor Bill Bloss, who is um, a, a world expert on air pollution. Um, I've, I've seen it in action where the collaboration work we do in, in India uh, on air pollution uh, I sit on the Healthy Cities Commission, which is about to, to launch, and our, um, we, we're saying farewell to our, our, our really highly respected superstar Vice Chancellor Professor Sir David Eastwood, who has uh, been at this university for 12 and a half years. I've been Chancellor for seven and a half years, and I've seen firsthand amazing, amazing work that he's done. He's hugely respected in the university world, not just here in the UK, but around the globe. Uh, during his tenure, we've invested a billion pounds, one billion pounds in 12 and a half years on this amazing campus of ours. Um, and so we wish him well. And his successor, 
who was here as the, the deputy vice chancellor, as a provost, for the first two and a half years of my chancellorship, went away to Sussex University to be vice chancellor there and is coming back uh, to be vice chancellor here. And Adam Tickell is a geographer as well, so um, he would have loved this ceremony. Uh, so congratulations once again to all of you. Uh, be proud of what you've achieved over here and, and be proud that you're, you're graduating from a highly, highly ranked university. We're always one of the top in the country. We're at Russell Group University. We're top 100 in the world. So be proud of being uh, a Birmingham um, uh, alumni that you are going to be now. And the skills that you've learned here, you can apply to just about anything. Uh, we are very highly ranked in employability, whatever ranking, so I can guarantee you if you haven't got a job, you'll get a job. Um, we'd always do well at that. But the one bit of advice I would give you is whatever you do, whatever career you pursue, follow your passion, not your pension. Don't do it if you're not going to enjoy it. Love what you do. I've been very, very lucky. Uh, I've been in the House of Lords now for 15 and a half years. I, I, I started off as one of the three youngest peers in the House of Lords when I joined 15 and a half years. I'm still one of the younger peers in the House of Lords. Our average age is 70. Um, but I love it. I absolutely love serving in Parliament. It's a privilege to be there. Uh, I love the business that I founded, Cobra Beer, three, three, three decades ago. Um, I, I still chair it, I still run it, and I'm passionate about it. Um, I love being Chancellor of this great university, and I'm currently the President of the Confederation of British Industry, and I love that job, and it's such a privilege to be in that position at this time in, in history. So just pursue what you're going to do. And by the way, whatever your career, success is not a straight path. Uh, it's not a destination. It's a journey, and it's usually a very bumpy journey. I've nearly lost my business three times. Um, and you're going to make lots of mistakes. And one of my favorite sayings is, good judgment comes from experience, and experience comes from bad judgment. So there's no shortcut to making those mistakes and hopefully learning uh, from those mistakes. Uh, you are going to go down in history, the graduates this year, people will look back and say, wow, what they went through. This has been a horrible time. This has been a nightmare for the world the last two years, coming up to two years now. And uh, you just think back to where you were this time uh, two years ago. There was an election. Brexit wasn't done. Think back to where we were a year ago. The first vaccination took place on this day, V-Day, the 8th of December. We finally discovered a vaccine at breakneck speed, never been done before in history. The shortest time was four years. There was light at the end of the tunnel. And look where we are today, where we've got this new variant and there's still uncertainty. So this has been a really challenging time. And you have graduated through this challenging time. And I remember in May last year, two years into the pandemic, Satya Nadella, uh, who went to a school that I went to in Hyderabad, I was born and brought up in India, the chief executive of Microsoft, globally, he said in May last year, in two months, the world has adopted and adapted to technology that would have taken well over two years. So we've been amazing um, in adapting and in being resilient. And a professor that taught me at business school, the beginning of the pandemic in March, he sent me his seven C's in dealing with a crisis. And I've kept it next to me on my desk. And it's inspired me. And those seven C's are calm, compassion, community, communication, confidence, collaboration, and cash. And this government has been fantastic in supporting us, 400 billion pounds, the furlough scheme and all the different loan schemes uh, that have basically the testing that we all free lateral flow tests to our homes and our offices, uh, deliver to our doorstep, all that in per capita terms and absolute terms has helped save millions of businesses, millions of jobs. So you have gone through adversity. Another saying that I love is some people fail because of, others succeed in spite of. So in spite of all the challenges, you've graduated and you should be proud of that. You're joining a university with, you know, we have Olympic gold medalists. You walk to the vice chancellor's office along the corridor as you turn left out of this hall, 
They're the pictures of the 11 Nobel Prize winners from this uh, university. Um, and and, and you're, you're leaving in terms of graduating, but I'm sorry, this is Hotel California. You can check out any time you want, but you can never leave. And I mean that seriously. You are forever, forever alumni of this university. 300,000, over 300,000 around the world. There is two or three countries in the world that don't have Birmingham alumni. Every other country does. So you're always part of the Birmingham family. And if you were graduating from an American university, when I became an alumnus of an American business school, the next day I received an email asking me for money. We're not quite so blunt over here. But do give. Do give back to this university when the time comes. And I'm not just talking about money. And by the way, it is money as well. This land, 300 acres, the best 300 acres in Birmingham, was given to the Calthorpe family, their benefaction. Joseph Chamberlain, old Joe, the tower named after Joseph Chamberlain, one of the greatest entrepreneurs in this country, great politician, benefaction. So we benefit from benefaction. And, and in future, put back in time, put back in money, give back to your university. And we have Birmingham Action, an amazing program, a volunteering program uh, as well. And I urge you to take part in, in that. So I go back to our motto, which you've walked across. Most people don't even look at their school mottos or the university mottos, but this one has real meaning. Per adua ad alta, which means through effort to high things. So finally, it's my job before we close the ceremony to give you uh, some advice. And I, I would just share a few things with you. First, you're all going to be leaders. My father was a senior general in the Indian Army, in charge of uh, commander-in-chief of the Central Army, in charge of 350,000 troops. And he said to me once, he said, son, remember, the true test of leadership is not in the good times. The true test of leadership is in times of adversity. And have we had adversity? Have you had that test over the last almost two years? So remember that when you lead in the future. When I started Cobra Beer, it's a business, an entrepreneur. There's one word that sums up entrepreneurship. Short word, guts. It takes guts to do it. Many people have ideas. How many of them will actually go out and give up whatever job they're doing or opportunity they have and go and take that risk in starting a business? That takes guts. But secondly, more importantly, you need the guts to stick with it when others would give up. And I've nearly lost my business three times, and I know exactly what that means. And you've had this test of resilience of having to keep going uh, while you've been through this horrible time of the last almost two years. And Winston Churchill, I remember he said that when you're going through hell, keep going. And you've kept going, and here you are, you've graduated. Um, be proud of your university. There are some of you who've got PhDs today. Well, we're 1% of the world's population in the United Kingdom, and we produce 16% of the world's leading research papers. We have the best universities in the world, along with the United States of America. We have more world leaders at any one time around the world who've been educated at British universities and American universities than any other countries in the world by miles. So be proud to be graduates of a British university and a Birmingham university. And to the doctoral students, I think they deserve a huge round of applause to our doctors. I also want to acknowledge another group who have graduated today. You will have seen many, many of our graduates today were international students. I came to this country as a 19-year-old from India as an international student. My grandfather, my mother's father, graduated from this university in 1931. My mother graduated from this university in the 1950s. Her brother graduated from this university in the 19. 60s with a PhD. I graduated from British University. My older son and my older daughter have graduated from a British University. My younger son is at a British University. Four generations. The power of international students is phenomenal. Not just the 30 billion pounds that you bring into our country, which we are very grateful for, but far more importantly, the enrichment of our universities by your presence here the living bridge that you provide with your countries, 
the permanent ambassadors that you are for this great country and your countries, and we're grateful to you. So I think to our international students, a huge round of applause. And finally, let's look forward. Let's look ahead. One of my roles is I chair the memorial gates just next to Buckingham Palace at Hyde Park Corner in London. And those gates were inaugurated by Her Majesty the Queen in 2002 to commemorate the service and sacrifice, volunteers, five million individuals in the First and Second World Wars from South Asia, Africa, and the Caribbean. We have a ceremony every year on Commonwealth Day in March. Without that service and sacrifice, we wouldn't have the freedom that we enjoy today. And on one of the pillars of those gates is an inscription by Ben Okri, the award-winning, Booker Prize-winning author and poet that says, our future is greater than our past. So let's look forward to our future. And finally, when you walk out of there, the learning doesn't stop. My younger son was dropping him to school when he was 17 years old a few years ago. He turned around to me and said, Dad, you've got to live as if you're going to die tomorrow. I said, what are you talking about? He said, Dad, you've got to learn as if you're going to live forever. Said, Where did you get that, Josh? Mahatma Gandhi, of course, Dad. So learn as if you're going to live forever. The learning never stops. And my final advice to you is this. Believe in yourselves. With all the challenges you're going to face, believe in yourselves. Because your beliefs become your thoughts, your thoughts become your words, your words become your actions, your actions become your habits, your habits form your character, and your character determines your destiny. Good luck, all the very best, very well done, and thank you. I now declare this congregation closed.